Hi and welcome to my math class. Today we're doing a revision on all of the grade 11 trig graphs. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to get the equations of the graphs. When they give you a drawing, then you need to determine how do we get the equations. Now, you must look at where it starts. If it is in front, this is the amplitude. Now remember this is grade 10 work and the amplitude is top minus bottom divided by 2. But you must remember that this year has to be one complete cycle. So you have to look at what they give you. Are they giving you a complete graph or are they giving you half a graph? If they're giving you half a graph, you have to draw the rest of the graph to determine the complete cycle. Now, how do we get B? B is you're going to take your point. So you're going to take any point where you usually know, but you're going to take the old X value. So that's where you would look at your mother graph divided by the new X value. So if you look at your mother graph and you take, okay, I want a turning point and you know the sin turning point is at 90. So the old point is usually 90, but then you're given a diagram and now you've got that this is 180. So you'll take old divided by new, 90 divided by 180. Then when we're looking at P, and Q. Your starting points are relevant. For a sin graph, our starting point is 0 and 0. For a cos graph, it is 0 and your amplitude. And for a tan graph, it is also 0 and 0. Now, how does the Q affect us? When you look at the graph, if you have an adjustment of P and Q, then you're going to standardly start with P, which means that you're going to look at where is the graph starting. Now what that means is you know how the mother graphs look. You know that if I'm drawing a sun graph, then my graph looks like that. Or if I'm drawing a cos graph, and if you're drawing a tan graph, you know how the mother graphs look. Now when you look at it and you look at the graph and you say, but you know, this starting point is now all of a sudden at a different point. You know how the graph looks. You know how it should be, but where it's starting is not at the right place. So what does that affect? That affects P. So the starting point should have been 0, 0, and now all of a sudden it's maybe 30 and 0. So that emphasizes or changes our P. So you need to know your mother graphs to see, okay, where does P start? Now, once you know the starting point of the X, you also have to realize what happens to the starting point of Q? When the P and Q change, this is an X change. And this is a Y change. And when we're doing an X change or a Y change, remember the Y, the signs are the same, but in X change, the signs are usually different. Now let us go and look at the examples that we have. Okay, if you look at this graph, first you're going to try and do A. Now, why would you choose A over P? Because the relationship is multiplication and board mass still applies. Now, A means amplitude. So what does that mean? It means I'm going to say the top minus the bottom divided by 2. Now, what is the highest point we have here? The highest point we have is at 2. And the lowest point we have is at minus 2. So if I say 2 top minus minus 2 bottom divided by 2, I'm going to end up with 2. 
So I know my A is equal to 2. Now since it's a sin graph, my starting point of a sin graph should have been 0, 0. My starting point of a sin graph should have been 0, 0. But it is not starting there. If you look at the sin graph, the starting point is at 30. Can you see? Look. Now how do I know it's at 30 and not at minus 1? Because my Q didn't change. You see here, the plus Q is 0. My Q is 0. So I know that my Y is definitely going to be 0. My Y is 0. But my X is not 0. So that is how come I took the 30 as my starting point and not here where it's minus 1 and 0. Because my Q didn't change. When they tell you to get the equation, they would always give you an equation already. So they already give you this. From that you can see there's an adjustment on A and there's an adjustment on P. But there is no adjustment on Q. So I know my sin starting point is 0 and 0. There's no adjustment on Q, which means that that's still going to be 0. But there is an adjustment on P. And it's not starting on 0, 0, which means it jumped. So it became 30. But how do I write it? When I put it in my equation, then remember the sign changes. So you would have had that P is equal to minus 30. Now if you write it down, you're going to have y is equal to 2 sin theta minus 30. Right, remember again that your coordinate in your graph and the one in the equation is always different. So if it's minus 30 here, then your coordinate is 30. Okay, so if you were going to start and you're going to say, okay, what is, let's say you want to test it. Y is equal to 2 sin. Now we're going to try the point 30. So it will be 30 minus 30. So if you press that in your calculator, you're going to have Y is equal to 2 sin of 0, which is going to give you 0. And the coordinate is absolutely right. 30 and 0. Now let's go through this again. This is your amplitude, top minus bottom divided by 2. Your P is dependent on your X starting point. And then because your Q was already 0, you knew that the Q or the Y value is going to be 0, but the X changed. Let's take another graph. Y is equal to A cos B theta. Now you should know how to do A already. It is top minus bottom. In this case, it's 3 minus, th minus minus 3. So we've got 3 minus minus 3 divided by 2, which is going to equal to 3. So we know we have y is equal to 3 cos b theta. What we know is that our coordinates should have been 0 and the amplitude. But if you look, the graph is not starting on 0 and 3. It is starting on minus 3. So what that means is that the graph is turned upside down. So A is actually equal to minus 3 because it is upside down. So when you look at the A, if it is upside down, if the graph is upside down, then it is a minus sign. Now, we have that A is minus 3. How do we determine B? The B is equal to old over new. What does that mean? Let's take a mother graph. If you take a mother graph, where would the first cut be? If you take a mother graph of a cos graph, the first cut is at 90 degrees. If you were going upside down, the first cut would still be at 90 degrees. So the old position for the first cut should have been at 90. The new position is at 30. So what does B equal to? B would equal to 3. If we were rewriting it, it would be 3 cos 3 theta. 
y is equal to 3 cos 3 theta. Let's look at the tan graph. If we look at this tan graph, we know that the amplitude doesn't work. There is no high or low for a tan graph because you have asymptotes. They go on till forever. Okay, so the norm for an amplitude for a tan graph is that you look at the 45 degree points. If you look at this graph and we look at the 45 degree points, we can see that the asymptotes are on the 45 degrees or we have a zero, but let's mark all the 45s. Now let's see, right? We have on this point a zero, we have a one. On this 45, we have zero. On this 90, which is also 45, so it's all the multiples of 45, we have a 90. Then we have an asymptote. Then we have a 1. So if you take the highest minus the lowest based on the 45 degree points, what do we get? The highest we have is 1 on a 45 degree point. And the lowest we have is minus 1. So we have 1 minus minus 1 divided by 2 which is equal to 1. So we know that our A is 1. So we have A is equal to 1. But look at the graph. If you know your tan graphs, you know a tan graph goes like this. But if you look at this, this graph should have went like this and now it's not. It's actually going the opposite way. And as soon as it goes the opposite way, it means it's upside down. So A is going to equal to minus 1. Because when we discussed that if it's upside down, then it is minus 1. So if you look at the graph, instead of it going this way, it is going the other way. Can you see this line here and this line here? Can you see it's going upside down? Now, we know that it is minus 1. The next thing we know is that the starting point of a tan graph is 0, 0. Now, they told us that Q didn't change. Q is still 0. So this graph should have started at 0, 0, and since it's going upside down, it should have looked like this. But something happened. What happened to it is it moved 45 degrees. The P changed, the X changed. So now we've got 45 and 0. So how do we write it? We have minus 1, 10, open brackets, theta minus 45 y is equal to minus 1, 10, theta minus 45. Now look at what I actually want to show you. What does that make p equal to? Can you see that p is equal to 45 degrees? Why? Because there was already a minus in the question that I gave you. Look at this one. This one here, I said p was minus 30. Because if you draw, if you fill in the information, A sin theta plus P based on what the department gives you, then if you line it up, P is equal to minus 30. But when you line this one up, because they had a minus in the equation, then P is simply 45. You must line it up. You must know that the original equation will be a different coordinate. So if the coordinate is 45, then in the equation you're going to have minus 45. But when you're determining P, you have to use what the department gives you. Alright, so our final equation is Y is equal to minus 1 because it is upside down. And then we have 10 theta minus 45 where the original point should have been 0, 0. It is 45. Thank you for watching.